The movie Death Hunt uh, is loosely based on the true story of the uh, largest manhunt in the history of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. It takes place in 1932 and concerns one Albert Johnson, who's accused of being a murderer. The producers hired uh, international star uh, Charles Bronson to play the leading role. And as the story continues, uh, we find out perhaps he's not guilty of everything that we think he is. Academy Award winner Lee Marvin was brought on board to play the Mountie, Edgar Millen, who, uh, who tracks down Albert Johnson. Another famous star, Angie Dickinson, uh, comes in and plays a small role. Andrew Stevens uh, plays um, Alvin Adams, another Mountie that comes to help uh, Lee Marvin uh, track down Johnson. Uh, Andrew was married to Kate Jackson at that time, who was uh, probably most well known for being one of Charlie's Angels. Carl Weathers was also a part of the cast. He was best known for playing Apollo Creed in the Rocky films, and uh, later on was in Happy Gilmore and Action Jackson. Ed Lauder, who's often found playing a, a bad guy in movies, uh, played the bad guy in this one. A couple Canadians, uh, Augie Schellenberg and Maurice Shakin, who uh, kept busy in Hollywood. And there's the director, Peter Hunt, uh, probably best known for his uh, work on the James Bond films, including uh, directing Honor Majesty's Secret Service. And there's me, I uh, was the intern to Peter Hunt, and got a chance to be uh, on the set every day, or perhaps in the editing room, and got a chance to find out exactly how they made professional motion pictures. So uh, it was really a treat for me, because uh, Peter was one of my idols, and to, to get a chance to talk to him every day was uh, really, really neat. Jimmy Davis, the cinematographer, also had worked on the Bond films. Um, they're checking out a shot. And there's just sort of an overview of many of the, the crew and the, and the cast as they film a scene. And there we are blowing up a, a log cabin. People Magazine uh, was up there for a few days and they did an article uh, about us. When I wasn't on set, I was in the editing room. I sometimes drove this little Chevette or whatever it was to get to the, um, the apartment that we use for editing. And there I am, uh, I'm in there working. I think I'm edge numbering some sound um, film. And what follows now are actually some slides uh, that I took uh, during the making of Death Hunt. The, uh, the movie was filmed in the Canadian Rocky Mountains near Banff. Alberta, and this is a view of the uh, some of the scenery that we encountered. Uh, of course, there was uh, a number of these mountain ranges. This may very well be the same one, just from a slightly different view. Uh, but in any case, getting up uh, the mountains could often be a challenge for us. We had to sometimes dynamite out the roads and plow them so we could get uh, the cast and the crew uh, up to where we were going to film. Uh, often we were up uh, knee-deep snow. The horses even would have trouble getting through it. Uh, here's a scene we're getting ready to film uh, on a frozen lake. And uh, on the right is Carl Weathers getting ready to, to film. There's Carl's stand-in, a guy named Mike. Uh, now Mike uh, is very politically incorrect. He's wearing blackface here so that he can double for, uh, double for Carl. If you look real carefully there, you can, see, uh, you can see a horse in the middle of this lake. And... Uh, they're out there getting ready to, to set up a shot where an airplane uh, will land on this uh, the, the frozen lake. There's some of the crew out there getting ready to film. And there you can see, if you look carefully on the left, you can see the camera there. Uh, we also used wind machines and there was occasionally some artificial snow just to make it look a little more, a little more treacherous. There's one of a couple planes that we used uh, that would, would fly over, and it's probably a good thing that we had a couple because one of them had a little crash. Nobody was hurt, uh, but we had to use the, uh, the second plane in these scenes. So uh, in, the, in the story, what's happening here is uh, um, they're dropping off some supplies um, to, to Lee Marvin and his crew who are hunting for Charles Bronson. There's the plane landing. Um, that's Peter Hunt and the crew uh, filming there. The plane lands, and the conversation between Lee Marvin there on the left and an actor named Scott Highlands on the right who plays the, the pilot of the plane. A lot of these aerial um, scenes uh, required uh, photography that was best done with this little blue ball there that took down to the side of the, uh, the helicopter so that it could be operated by remote control and the cameraman wasn't having to hang out of the, uh, the helicopter to get shots like this. Um, 
this is one of many uh, different vistas uh, that we encountered. Um, if you look carefully there near the edge of the, the ravine, you can see some of the actors are getting ready to do a scene where they run across the tundra. A lot of, a lot of dogs were used. Uh, we had dog sleds, you'll see some of those a little bit later. But very, very pretty German shepherds. They had their trainer there. Uh, the fellow in the blue there is their, his trainer, and he's uh, talking to Andrew Stevens there in the center and Ed Lauder on the right, a couple of the actors that are getting ready to, to do a scene. Here's uh, director Peter Hunt uh, talking to the dog trainers and the, uh, the actors as they set up a tracking shot. You can see the tracks on the right-hand side there. And uh, good old Lee Marvin. He came in uh, oh, a week or so early and learned to, to snowshoe. Uh, a lot of the actors spent a good deal of time on snowshoes. There's, uh, there's Peter once again lining up a, a shot that they'll use uh, on these dolly tracks. The red blanket on the camera is just a heating pad to keep the, the camera warm. Now here they are actually filming the scene that they've been setting up with, uh, with Lee and uh, some of the Mounties going across the, the snow. Another uh, vista looking out. Uh, we never knew from day to day what kind of weather we'd have, but most of the time it was pretty good. Uh, a lot of dog sleds were used. Now here's just one, but uh, I, I think they had at least a dozen or two dog sleds in a couple of the scenes. And uh, it, it occasionally can get a little bit wild with uh, the dogs running all over the place. Here we are trekking up the side of uh, a mountain to get to, the, to a location. Uh, as it turned out, very, very pretty once we got up there. You'll see in a moment there. Uh, yeah, this kind of stuff is what we'd encounter on almost a daily basis uh, when we were, uh, when we were uh, up there filming. And, uh, snow's not always easy to, to film in uh, because it can leave tracks and, and so on and sometimes the light can reflect in some strange ways. Um, there's Andrew Stevens on the snowmobile. He was married uh, at that time to Kate Jackson who was one of Charlie's Angels and there she is on the back of the snowmobile getting ready to take a little ride somewhere. Um, here we are uh, getting ready to film a scene. The fellow in the center is Charles Bronson's uh, stepson who also happens to be a stand-in. And here's, uh, here's Charlie himself with his uh, $3,000 uh, fur coat that he, that he wears. Now this uh, next scene right here's, uh, here's Charles' uh, stunt double going up the side of the, the mountain. Uh, anytime you don't see Charles' face, it's uh, his stunt, stunt double. A really nice um, Australian guy named Alex Green. Here's, uh, here's me and uh, Alex. I think right after he did that little, uh, little take uh, trudging up the side of the mountain. Another beautiful vista that we enjoyed that particular day. It was a little cold sometimes. My um, my feet would get slightly numb. I think I uh, I may have had a case of frostbite. Um, now you know they really use director's chairs, and here they are. Uh, they had, we had a little trouble with these because they would fall down into the snow because uh, the legs would just just sink right in, and people were always tumbling over. And another problem with the snow is you don't want to leave tracks. So here we have to sort of uh, we have to dig out a path for the, the camera and the crew so they can line up a shot. Uh, if, if worse came to worse, you could always use a, a broom and sort of get it back into place, but uh, the, the best alternative, or the best way to do it was just not to make a mess uh, to begin with. So um, here's Lee and uh, Andrew just getting ready to come over uh, the top of the, uh, the mountain here. And there is uh, Peter Hunt, Pam Carlton, and uh, Assistant Director uh, Frank Ernst. Frank's on the walkie-talkie there. He's the one that uh, has to yell, Quiet, please, we're rolling. Here's some more uh, uh, dog sleds and dogs. If you look carefully on the left, that yellow thing that looks like a school bus is actually a 12-passenger snowmobile. Here's uh, Mike again. He's doubling uh, his feet for a scene uh, where they find half a frozen goat, he and Lee Marvin. Lee didn't always rush to his trailer. Lee hung around a lot, so... Um, he, he was used a little bit more in the scenes than uh, perhaps Charlie was. Now here we've got uh, Kate uh, helping the sound men rig up uh, Andrew Stevens for a shot where he's, uh, with a wireless mic underneath his uh, parka there. Because they were filming in the woods and you really couldn't get a boom mic in there. Oh, and here's just everybody. Uh, a whole bunch of them. The weather's warmed up a little bit. Um, got a little bit nicer, which later caused us some trouble because we needed more snow and there wasn't any. And there's yours truly, looking through the camera, seeing what the shot looks like. That was sort of part of the fun. 
here's uh, Peter Hunt talking to Alex Green. They're getting ready to film a scene where the uh, the good guys are actually shooting at uh, Charles Bronson as he runs into the to the log cabin. If you look real carefully, you can see a little smoke from the squibs, the explosive charges that were in the uh, in the side of the cabin that blew up to simulate gun gunfire. Oh, and here's some more of the crew. There's actually a light back there. You can see it right by the ladder. Uh, even though it's uh, bright outside, you need uh, arc lamps to, to fill in the shadows and so on and so forth. Here's the dog handler doubling for Ed Lauder getting attacked by one of the dogs. Uh, in this particular scene, because you don't want to do it more than necessary, um, there are multiple cameras used. Uh, there's Jimmy Davis uh, in the green, uh, green vest. He's the cinematographer. Normally doesn't operate the camera, but uh, in this case does. To get that blue smoke to come out of the other day, I put a little WD-40 down the barrel of the gun. Then when they fire the blank, it gives it a little more realistic look. Now this poor guy, he's getting shot in the head. And uh, they use a compressed air cylinder that fires a little gelatin capsule with fake blood in it. And then they put an explosive squib on the guy at the back of the guy's head. We had a nurse standing by, and there she is right in the middle. Hung out with us uh, every day. Thankfully, it wasn't needed very often. Um, we had a lot of uh, horses on the set as well. Very, very pretty horses. And, uh, quite nice. I got a chance to go horseback riding. Uh, not this particular day. But uh, Michael Duthie and I went. Now, uh, when you go on location, you have all these trailers for, uh, for the actors, for the sound people, for the props, for the director. So that's our entourage that has to work its way up uh, the side of the mountain. Now, we wouldn't sleep there, but we would eat uh, many of our meals there, sometimes as many as three, three meals a day. Uh, as long as the sun was out, we were trying to film. There's Frank Ernst. Frank had worked a lot with Peter on the Bond films and some other films as well. He's got his megaphone in his left hand, getting ready to shout something out. Now Frank has some helpers, a first assistant director and a, a second assistant director, and sometimes even a third assistant director. Um, here's me and one of the assistant directors. I think he was the, the third assistant. Uh, oddly enough, I later was a third assistant on another film called Best of the Best Three. There's Andrew and uh, Lee and Carl relaxing in between takes. There's Peter, always uh, dressed nicely no matter what the weather. Peter would either have a jacket and tie or a turtleneck and a jacket. Uh, now I didn't dress quite so nicely there. Um, I borrowed those trendy sunglasses from, um, from one of the girls uh, for some making some sort of fashion statement. Andrew Stevens uh, copying my lead I might, might say. Uh, also put him on. I think he got a better reaction than I did. Here's Ed Lauder getting a little makeup put on. The makeup man has to be really careful because um, the movies are shot out of sequence. So he, he relies on the continuity director in the script to figure out what, uh, what kind of wounds, in this case a rifle butt, when in uh, Ed's cheek need to be applied and when they need to be applied. Here's uh, getting ready for a shot. Uh, the bad guys uh, sneak up on Charles Bronson. Actually, they're supposed to be the good guys, but some of them end up being sort of bad guys. This is a camera mount that looks right over the top of a shotgun barrel. So that's Peter Hunt uh, lining up that shot. I don't think it ever was used in the movie. Another poor guy getting, uh, getting shot. Fairly violent film. Here's uh, a couple of the stand-ins. They later appear in the movie. But they have a hard job to do. They have to stand there and, and when the lights are being set up, and they're there for all the boring bits. There's Lee Marvin. Uh, if you look carefully on the right, you can see there are a fake dog there right by the log cabin. The cabin was built especially for the movie. On the left is a big butterfly scrim, and that's used either to reflect light into a scene or to diffuse light so it's not quite so harsh on the actors' faces. And there's Lee and uh, Peter pointing up uh, at the mountains. I believe we're getting ready to do um, an avalanche scene. It, it, as it turned out, it wasn't a very big avalanche, um, but they did need to drop a little dynamite up into these mountains, and that's what they're getting ready to do. Uh, we had a, a mountain expert 
There he is in the back there, Bruno Engler. And there's Jimmy Davis on the binoculars and Peter Hunt, the director, looking up there. And they, uh, they put a helicopter up there and they drop some dynamite. If you look carefully, there's a red helicopter right there and they drop a little dynamite. And that manages to shake enough uh, snow loose. From we were, where we were, it didn't, uh, didn't look all that spectacular, but there you have a bit of an avalanche. If you want to see a really good one, uh, Peter's James Bond film, Modern Majesty's Secret Service, has a great avalanche. There's me talking to Lee. Very, very friendly guy. Uh, not at all egotistical or stuck up, and we had many conversations. He'd, uh, he'd invite you into his trailer, and, you know, uh, always very, very friendly. G good friend of the crew. I think he's trying to pull up my tongue here. Now here's one of those scenes where we actually needed some more snow, so we had to bring it up in dump trucks. That's Charlie Bronson there on the left, um, getting ready to film a scene. And uh, it was unseasonably warm, so we found ourselves having to haul the snow up there, which wasn't something we had intended on doing, but had to be done. Here's uh, stunt double Alex Green. This time Alex is playing a small role in the film. He kept very busy. Uh, there was a lot of stunt work that Alex was involved with. Alex was a whip expert, and later on you'll see, uh, see him cracking his whip. Another beautiful, uh, beautiful vista there. Oh, and there's Lee and uh, Charlie in the back, and uh, some other folks hanging on. Fair number of people that it takes to make a movie. Here's a great picture of those two, only messed up by that guy in the background. That, that, crazy intern from Indiana back there in the background messed up a really nice picture. This is the little town of Canmore and uh, Canmore is where we had a little studio where we did a lot of the interior shots. This entire movie was made on location in, uh, in Alberta. Here's another, um, another building. It was built for the movie. Trading post. and uh, It remained there. I think it's still there to this day. This is the exterior of an ice cave there's a scene where Charles Bronson hides in an ice cave. Well, those aren't the easiest things to find, so, uh, so there's the outside, and there's the inside of the ice cave. Uh, oddly enough, it doesn't, uh, doesn't, he doesn't spend a lot of time in the movie in there. That's me and Pam Carlton. Pam was the script supervisor. She makes sure that uh, everything matches up from scene to scene. Sometimes it's called the continuity director. There's my luxurious hotel at the, uh, the Traveler's Inn, or whatever it was called, there in Banff. Spent two and a half months living in that room. And this is another building uh, that we built, a really nice little town. This is, uh, this is Beeler's General Store, and actually had an interior to it. Some of the scenes I'm in are filmed in there. That's me, uh, right there with the little, it looks like an engineer's cap. I played a shopkeeper's assistant and uh, was used in uh, two or three scenes in the movie. Got to do some pieces of business that Peter gave me to do. There's some dead bodies there. You see them propped up underneath the, uh, the porch. And uh, that's me trying to look as cool as possible. But, uh, it was a lot of fun. I uh, appreciated Peter putting me in the movie. There's uh, Lee and I talking about something or another. Again, what a, what a nice, nice guy. And really all the actors were. It was uh, Charles Bronson, a little quieter, but still very nice. Ed Lauder, uh, often playing a bad guy, even in movies to this day, or often of a police detective, you'll see Ed. Super, super guy. And uh, this is the director, Peter Hunt and I. Uh, Peter and I became very good friends over the years and uh, developed many uh, mutual acquaintances. There's a couple of the stand-ins. Not standing in here. I have a little part in the movie. And there's Alex and his uh, bullwhip. Um, Alex was actually quite uh, well known internationally uh, for his expertise with the whip. Uh, he'd done lots of demonstrations. He's even done instructional videotapes and uh, doubled for Zorro when the Zorro movie came out uh, a few years back uh, with Amp Anthony Hopkins uh, in it. So uh, he enlisted my help to do a stunt and uh, I did trust him. Uh, as it turned out, it was a lot of fun. It was sort of crazy. Uh, what he had me do was hold this piece of newspaper and he would whip it in half. And then I would hold the remaining piece and he would whip that in half. And he just kept on whipping until it was about the size of a three by five card. And uh, at that time, I, uh, I took a break. He later uh, made me a stuntman, an official member. I'm, I think I'm member 101 of Stunts Canada. Terrific guy. 
One day on the way back from location, looked out the window and there was a bear. So I grabbed the camera, took a quick, uh, quick picture of the bear. Oh, and this is just the sun setting. Typically, after a day of filming, then I would go to the editing room and look at the the rushes from the days, uh, the previous day, or actually weeks uh, filming. That's me and Angie Dickinson in a very poor Polaroid photograph. Didn't come out too well, but that that's her. That's Angie. And that's me. Now these uh, these next few bits are uh, actual clips from the movie. Just a, a few things uh, to take a look at, just for fun. The um, the the slate there. The the reason you have a clapperboard is to synchronize the sound. Um, the editor looks at that clapperboard and sees it go down when it meets the two pieces meet and then he can hear it and then um, that's how he synchronizes the sound it's a little more complicated than that but that's that's the reason for it and these are just a few leftover clips uh, from the actual movie I worked in the editing room so there were any number of uh, these are called trims so, uh, there's Ed fighting the dog Andrew about ready to get his nose clipped off there there's uh, Murray and Augie, and there's Peter directing Andrew. So, uh, yeah, what a fine time we uh, we had filming this movie. Uh, Death Hunt, 